morning, beloveds. So today was the, the day the gym didn't happen. Uh, I overslept, but we still got out on a reasonable time. We were five or eight minutes late to the gym and the trainer never showed. So I called the trainer, I texted the trainer, I called the trainer again. We waited about five minutes, but since he trains out of his garage, you know, it looks creepy and uh, we weren't about to wake his kids up. So we were like, screw this. We went home. Um, and then he texts us an hour after we got home to say, Hey, sorry. I was, I had a rough night with a sick kid. Um, and so and then he said, can we reschedule? And so we were like, yeah, it was just like, huh? Okay. That's what happened. But yeah. So I didn't go to the gym. I did go to the gym today, but I didn't work out today. So yeah, it's just, it happens, you know, it happens. All right. We are starting on 256. We are starting with treating stomach and bowel troubles. <laughs> I hope you've had breakfast. <laughs> Stomach and bowel, treating stomach and bowel troubles. All right. Because we're still in chapter 15, remember? No organ in the body is more quickly upset by a disturbed mental condition than the stomach. Frequently, people, not even familiar with the manner in which thought controls the body, are heard to remark that a certain experience has upset my stomach. Even those who do not habitually say grace before meals would do well to lift thought in Thanksgiving, putting aside all thought of worry, distrust, and anxiety, and thereby ensure a wonderful digestive, a perfect aid to assimilation. Hear that? He's advocating blessing the food. That's interesting. Sometimes a constant conflict in the emotional nature because of a of hurt feelings will become such an irritation that it manifests as a hemorrhage or a stomach ulcer. Also, a deep-seated sense of discouragement and disappointment will objectify in a disturbed condition of the stomach and bowels. Constipation is treated under a separate head, which we've already done constipation. That was earlier in the chapter, okay? Um, a patient may need to be shown that supersensitiveness is nothing more or less than an expression of selfishness, the presence of which may be unknown to them. I was not expecting that. Selfishness? Hmm. Okay. All right, Ernest. The very best mental remedy for stomach trouble is love, is love and joy. Say to yourself, the glory of my thought makes me immune to the to negative experiences, even to negative suggestions. The very life of God vitalizes my every organ and tissue. I now have perfect and complete faith in God as my ever-present good. My faith fills me and elates my entire being. As my thoughts relax, all the muscles of my body relax. The life spirit flows through me and my body responds perfectly to its healing activity. And every function of my body is now brought into perfect action. The infinite life, which is within me is now healing me, making me whole after the pattern of the infinite and eternal perfection. Now, here's the thing. I was not expecting selfishness, but stomach troubles and bowel troubles um, are definitely, you know, related to our thinking. Um, the, uh, the, the, it's called the gut brain connection. You have brain cells in your gut and you have some gut cells in your brain. And there is communication between your brain and your gut. I was listening to a training the other day. Um, because they were talking about the microbiome, the, the bacteria that lives in your gut, and how um, apparently 90% of the communication is from the gut to the brain. Brain doesn't talk to the gut a whole lot, but the gut talks to the brain a lot. 
Um, and so you're thinking definitely, you know, they talk about butterflies, they talk about nervous stomachs and all of that. It, it definitely comes back to your thinking. He's right. I'm still not sure about the selfishness. Um, although I will tell you, if you are sensitive, one of the best pieces of advice I got from a wonderful uh, practitioner at the time she was Tammy Sheets. She has gotten married, so that's no longer her last name. But um, uh, we were talking about sensitivity of, of, of a nature. And she says, well, just imagine a radio dial and turn the volume down. And I went, and it works. It works. So when I'm, when, when it's too much, when I'm in overwhelm, I'll just imagine that big old volume button and I'll just turn it down. So try it. You might like it. All right. We're going to treat insomnia, treating insomnia. Insomnia is the result of a disturbed mental condition, either conscious or subconscious. Sometimes this arises from shock, grief, or anxiety, though often it is merely an inability to let go of the affairs of the day. Perfect trust in God within is the secret of relaxation, rest, and renewal. The following is one treatment for insomnia. Okay, before I do it, one, it is very long, and two, there is nothing better than a good treatment to fall asleep to. You know, do a treatment for yourself, uh, partly because it, it, it sets you up for um, good dreams. You know, whatever, whatever you're working on, you know, that's that's what you take in the sleep. So but let's let's hear Ernest Holmes treatment. It is very long. The spirit within me is in perfect rest. The center of my being is quiet and poised. I let my inner spirit fill my whole being with peace and stillness. With this word, I now relax in body and mind. I let the divine tranquility fill me. My mind now releases all sense of burden or strain. Nothing can hurt or disturb my spiritual self. I am free and safe. All plans and ideas can wait until later. The divine wisdom works through me and I am protected from mistakes. My mind is quiet, calm, and deeply still. All tension is released, and the great inner peace flows out through every nerve. My body rests in the still silence of the spirit. I bless my body and mind, for they are good and worthy of my love. The great blessing of the spirit pours through me now and protects me in all my ways. My good is around and with me so that I am secure and safe. The loving presence of spirit is with me now and forever so that I am divinely protected. I let go of all problems and know that spirit is with me. The great quietness and calm of the universal love is within me. I am richly blessed. Rest permeates my mind and body with its healing presence. I do not try to make anything happen. I accept restful sleep. Restfulness pervades my room and my bed. I let the spirit take care of the universe and my affairs while I release all responsibility and sleep. The all-powerful mind of the indwelling Christ within me dissolves all sense of wakefulness, and I am at peace. That's pretty cool. All right. Next section is deafness. Because I can't end on that treatment because I get to go to work and I don't need to be sleepy at work. <laughs> and it's raining outside, so but, but already got a strike against me there. All right. We are reminded of the words of Isaiah. The Lord Jehovah hath opened thine ear. The ear is the physical representation of 
a receptive capacity of the mind, an attitude of quietness and confidence, a listening attitude of speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth will open the way for the voice of spirit to speak to the inner ear. We can so train our ears to listen to the divine harmony within that we shall reproduce its melody, rhythm, and beauty in all our ways. Hearing a divine idea in mind, and all the divine ideas are perfect. No, hang on. Hearing is a divine idea in mind, and all divine ideas are perfect. Ideas that have a service to render to the spirit of humanity. No, ideas have a service to re render to the spirit of humanity. And as long as a person expects and accepts wholeheartedly that service and cooperates co consciously and subjectively with it, there is nothing to oppose the functioning of the physical instrument through which ideas operate. Treat to know that your hearing is perfect, that it is God hearing through you. There is no belief in inaction that can in any way, wait, that can in any way, hint, can, whew. all right. Sometimes sentences are hard. <laughs> okay, let me try this. There is no belief in inaction that can any way. No, I'm, I'm putting a word that isn't there. All right. There is no belief in inaction that in any way can hinder this hearing. For every idea of the body is now complete and perfect and functioning according to divine law. Be open and receptive to the truth. Let the inner ear listen to the voice of truth that is always speaking. Say, I perfectly hear the voice of good. My ears are open to the divine harmony. The inner ear and the outer ear are both open and receptive to the vibration of perfect harmony. Oh my goodness, why was I having so much trouble with that paragraph? I had all the words, I just didn't have them in the right order, and it wasn't making sense. Ah, I need a treatment for being able to read. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Here. All right, I definitely want to do a couple more sections. Oh, because they're just, they're just, Ernest is, I mean, he's not wrong. He's definitely not wrong. He's, he's right. Um, and sometimes he goes places that you're not expecting, but he's not treating conditions. Like I said, he's, he's looking at the principle behind. He's looking at the, per, the, the, per, the, the perfect idea behind whatever, diseased condition we are dealing with. This chapter has been a whole lot of fun, but a whole lot of work. All right. Um, so apparently weather conditions <laughs> rates a section. So let's see what he has to say about weather conditions. Pure spirit is not and cannot be governed by any weather conditions whatsoever. All weather is a manifestation of spirit. A flowering of the divine in sunshine, in shade, in rain, and in clouds. Say, I am in complete unity with all. I am in complete agreement with all. And I enjoy all. There is no congestion in the weather and none in me. There is no confusion about the weather in my thoughts. I have no fear of any kind of weather since I know that I am at one with all. I love the clouds, the rain, and the sunshine. I am one with heat and with cold. I am unified with humidity, with dryness of atmosphere, and with sunshine and shadow. Every atom of my body responds to this understanding that changes in weather conditions are but variations of the one life, but different manifestations of the one God appearing to me 
in many forms. Each and every one of the forms I love and feel my unity with. I love the heat of the desert and the dampness of the ocean. I feel physically complete and harmonious in every climate. I do not condemn any kind of weather for all are part of myself. I am one with all. I love all and I feel comfortable in all. Every belief that I may ever have had that says I am afraid of weather conditions is now vanished from my thought forever. It is no more and therefore can no longer operate. I know and feel my freedom. In this freedom, I rejoice. I didn't know where it was going to go with that. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more section. Mm, one more section. We're going to do thoughts about food. Thoughts about food. Yeah. Food must be a spiritual idea. It must be an idea of substance and supply. Since the food which we take into the system is fundamentally one with the body which receives it. There is no reason in spirit why our food should harm us. We cannot expect to overeat or to eat the wrong things and have them agree with us. But there is an intelligence within us which will guide us into a proper diet. Since each is an individual, the intaking of food is an individual idea and an individual approach to reality. Whatever our individual phys physical systems needs to make it harmonious, intelligence will guide us too. But we cannot expect to have our food agree with us if we are constantly condemning it. And then he's got a little treat note, which I'm going to do in just a minute. But I think that's really interesting. Um, and it's one of those things. So I'm reading um, uh, The Mastery of Self by Don Ruiz Jr., uh, which is, the, he, that's, I believe, the son of the guy who wrote The Four Agreements. Uh, and he talks about attachments and he talks about domestication. Now, there are a whole lot of us, especially in my generation, that grew up with starving children in Africa. And so we were told to clean our plates, which taught us to ignore that feeling of fullness. So we actually do overeat because we've learned to ignore that over, that over, that, that full feeling, you know? And so that's something that we need to work on. Our body is intelligent and our body will tell us, Hey, you know what? You're full. And our body will also tell us, Hey, you know what? I don't really like when you eat that, but we don't, we ignore it. You know, we go and we take, um, we take acid blockers and we take Tums and we take, you know, all of these things. Um, when, so we're ignoring the wisdom of the body. We are ignoring the intelligence within us that tells us what to eat. And it's high time that we go back to listening to our body. So now I'm going to do, um, because the intelligence, that's what he's saying. The intelligence in your body will tell you. And that's, that's, that's been one of those things about being, um, uh, when I decided to go gluten free, uh, dairy free and added sugar free, um, now, because I don't eat them, I can tell when I do and my body's going, I don't like that. And so it's like, okay, well now I know that my body doesn't like that. I'm just, I'm going to listen to the wisdom of my body and not do that. But until I, you know, read this doctor's book um, yeah, I, and, and that's how you do it. It's like, if you don't feel good, start eliminating things, you know, take them out of your diet for a couple of weeks and then add them back in and see how you feel. And your, the, the intelligence of your body will tell you. Now you can also practice hard metaphysics and say that all food is nourishment and nothing will disturb my system, which may be what he's about to do, but it's, it's interesting because He's going to remind us that we are subject to the race consciousness until we're not. Okay, so this is Ernest's treatment about food, and then we're going to wrap this up. My food agrees with me, and I agree with it. There is no condemnation in me or working through me. 
I understand that food is a spiritual idea of substance, and I am now in complete agreement with this idea. Everything that I eat is perfectly assimilated and perfectly eliminated. I have no trouble digesting my food. For digestion is also a spiritual idea and works in perfect harmony with all that I take into my system. My system is spiritual and harmonious with every idea that passes through it. My food is spiritual and harmonious with my system. Substance and supply for the physical body are both spiritual and cannot create any inner disturbance whatsoever. That's what I figured he was going to do. He's going to like, he was going to, he was going to hardball metaphysics, physics it. Um, and you know, you got to listen to the wisdom of your body. You got to listen to the wisdom of your body. So, all right. Uh, we are going to start on page, uh, 560 with rheumatism. And there's a possibility we could finish this tomorrow, <laughs> uh, depending on how, you know, bent out of shape I get about rheumatism um, and his ideas. So uh, we, we may be, we, there is light at the end of the tunnel with chapter 15, although I have thoroughly enjoyed chapter 15. That's been a whole lot of, yeah, really interesting. Okay. Uh, basic housekeeping. I'm just going to remind you that we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark on the social medias. I am the running Rev Ryan uh, on the social medias that I am on. So uh, it's an easy way that you can support the center in me is to go to our social medias, like, subscribe, follow, share, comment. Um, we think we have good stuff to say, to share. It's uplifting, enlightening, enlightening, um, enlightening, you know, um, so please feel free to do that. All right. If you want more information about the center, there's two ways. The creativelife.org is our website, all the information, or you can get the constant contact email info at creativelife.org. It's one email a week. It's done by a real person and the hot links are hot. So if it says click here now, it'll take you right to the information or the person that can help you get it. All right. So there is that. Now, what was I going to move forward on? Um, I was going to, oh yeah, no, I'm going to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a work it out day, a dance in the rain day, uh, the weather's bypassing us day, a enjoy it while it's cooler day, a get some stuff done day, a middle of the week day, a wellness day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You are a beloved expression of the divine. You are a brilliant light. You are a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. Or as Reverend Jesse Lex calls, you are a godling. All right, beloveds. I am going to move on into the process of my day because it is Wellness Wednesday. So it could be a busy day, especially since the rain did slip more to the south. So we're not getting slammed the way we thought we were going to, um, which is both good and bad because a little rain is a good thing. A whole lot is not. He did talk about weather conditions today. All right. Uh, so <laughs> take care of yourself. Um, no, hang on. Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. We may finish the chapter tomorrow. Maybe. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time. <laughs>